Okay. All right, I got mic volume. All right, let me quickly check the chat and make sure uh, that everybody can hear me. If you can hear me, please either press one or just let me know that you can hear me. I just want to make sure that everything is okay right now. <clears throat> then we're going to get started. Okay. Okay. Good. Perfect. Okay. Let me know if I'm too loud. Also. Okay. We can hear you loud and clear, but just, I mean, literally let me know if I'm too loud. If my voice is too loud, uh, because I see my indicator is pe is peaking. I don't want to make, you know, I want to make sure that it's at a good level. Let me know if it's at a good level. FRC, FRZ. Origin one. Wow. Now you're going to notice that um, I made a couple of you guys moderators um, for a very particular reason. Um, I noticed in the support um, from you all, I'm probably going to be doing more moderators um, later on down the line, probably after the stream. Um, so uh, you didn't get the alert. Don't worry about it. I know a lot of people didn't, um, you know, we know what YouTube is doing. I explained that the last time. So a lot of people probably, there's a couple of people that contacted me and told me also uh, that they have been unsubscribed from my channel. So I don't want you guys thinking that I'm blocking you. Something else is going on. So, um, you know, we can, we, we can figure that out. All right, so I'm going to jump into this really quick. Um, there's a lot <clears throat> to discuss and my Patreons are familiar with what's been going on for the past couple of days. I couldn't live stream. I wanted to live stream two days ago, um, but it's a um, like right now I'm seeing that my stream, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm seeing that my, let me get some coffee. I'm seeing that my stream signal is not really good. Um, because there are uh, tropical thunderstorms happening as we speak. So I'm going to have to, I'm not going to, I'm going to try my hardest not to rush through this information, but, um, you know, I'm going to try my hardest to get through it and hopefully I don't get cut off here. And if I do, it's only because of that guys. Um, and of course I'll follow up probably with another video whenever the, whenever these, um, thunderstorms dissipate. But I want to jump into this now. Um, the name of this topic is the uh, lines of history that history teachers told. And there's a couple of things that I want to go over. Um, now, this is going to be part one. I'm going to name this part one. And I'm trying to pull this up here. Give me one second. Yeah, but I'm going to name this part one. Uh, because there's a couple of things that I want to discuss uh, dealing with how history loves to tell us uh, tales of stories that never existed. Um, and this is what we're going to discuss here. <clears throat> yeah, I'm seeing <clears throat> at the same time, I'm noticing I'm keeping my watch on how these um, thunderstorms are coming my way and I'm on the East coast. I just got to make sure everything is okay at the same time. So I have that up as well. So let me get right into this. Uh, history states. Oh, let me pull this up. History states. I'm going to read this quote that Charlestown was the primary port of call for slave ships and more slaves passed through <clears throat> Charlestown than any other city in the English colonies on the North American continent. Charlestown is Charleston, uh, South Carolina. Uh, this is a quote by historian J.D. Lewis on Carolina.com in 2007. And I definitely want to quickly go over a story about this. Um, just a brief personal story back in 2015. 
uh, while I was researching my family's genealogical background, I sat down with my grandfather. And my grandfather was born in 1936 in South Carolina. And of course, we know that South Carolina allegedly uh, is probably the most major part of the slave trade. Um, so I naturally asked them, you know, <clears throat> to tell me more about slavery. And my grandfather replied, what's that? And I was like, uh, I said, um, what's what slavery? And he said, yeah. I said, you never heard of it before. And he said, no. Okay. Um, and I said, okay. All right. Uh, so I explained to him what slavery was. And he told me that his parents, his uh, great-grandparents, his grandparents and his great-grandparents, should I say, uh, never went through such things before. In fact, my, I remember my grandfather telling me, he said, Daddy uh, had two farms, referring to his father, and Mama took care of him and the children, meaning children. Um, and if you uh, uh, probably some people out there in South Carolina got that same accent, you know where I'm coming from. Um, so now I was blessed to see uh, my great grandmother, who was his mother. And before she passed, I was um, like an early teenager. And I visited her and I remember she used to have this house. It was a two story, uh, beautiful home. Um, and they call it a shotgun house. And the reason why they called it a shotgun house is because if you fired off a shotgun from the front door, uh, directly straight, the pellets to reach all the way to the back door. <laughs> and I mean, it's, it was a peaceful area, uh, you know, big house. It was five minutes from a bakery. Oh, I used to love that bakery. That bakery has gone now and no signs of enforced labor was around, period. In fact, my grandfather mentioned uh, that he lived next door to a white family, and he even played with their uh, son as a child. I remember him recalling that, and by the way, I got the recording of that. If you can, guys, let me mention this. Record your uh, grandparents if they're still alive. Record them. Record them on camera. You, you need all of that information. Um, but... The only difference he told me between the whites and the Cullens at that time was the schooling. Now, when I, of course, did, you know, continued on with the um, genealogical background of records with my family, uh, I noticed that my grandfather was telling the truth. And he also told me, uh, which was very interesting, that he had to walk for miles to get to school. and. Um, the name of the school that he attended was called P.D. Indian School. P.D. Indian School at that time. I don't know what it's called now. I'm probably going to have to take a look at it and see what it's called now. But it was called P.D. Indian School at that time. Now, um, I just wanted to share that briefly with you guys to let you know. There's just probably going to be some similar stories out there. Um, definitely ask your uh, grandparents, great grandparents, if they're still if they're still alive, um, what school did they attend? And see, your grandparents are going to know, uh, you know, if their mothers or their mothers' mothers or fathers, okay, were enslaved. They're going to know that. I mean, see, keep in mind, I told you my grandfather was born in 1936. Okay, so I mean, what? 36 years later was the early was night the peak of the 1900s think about it guys think about it and then before that they said slavery was abolished in 1836 so you're not going to be too far off from that somebody's going to know and then and especially in south carolina even though slavery was abolished in 1836 that doesn't mean that those particular uh contracts were voided automatically where people didn't uh do involuntary labor or um, indigent servitude for someone or for themselves. You, you would need to check those records to find out for sure. Uh, but definitely it's not going to be to a point where you're going to notice 
that any of your family members were in chains and shackles and had a slave master. They were working for somebody for some pay. They were promised something. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but let me, let me go on to what I was stating here. And actually, let me, let me, I, I never did this before. I thought about it. I had to think about it. Should I share? I am. I am going to share this. This is a picture of my grandfather um, to the right. This is a picture of my grandfather. Um, and yes, he's still here. Thank you. So thankful for that. Um, but anyway, I want to jump to this picture right here. Now, keep in mind that they stated uh, that Charleston, South Carolina was the primary location for the most slaves that passed through in the North American continent. Now, here's a picture that history loves to use that allegedly depicts uh, an, <clears throat> an advertisement for newly incoming African slaves coming from Sierra Leone. Now look at the bottom, look at the bottom closely. Um, this, let me give you the description that, that was tied to this. Cause I'm going to go over where this came from and the source. Um, we're we're going to go into that. The description reads, uh, 1768, the firm of David and John Diaz. You can see that at the bottom advertised the sale of 94 African Americans in Charleston, South Carolina. Okay. Um, that's the quote. Now look at this picture closely. I notice at the very top, I don't know if you can see my mouse or not, but right at the very top, it says Charleston, July 24th, 1769. Now you see in bold letters, Okay, you see in bold letters, I'm hoping everything is coming out correctly where you can see this clear. You see in bold letters, the words, I mean the word Negroes, okay, uh, in capital letters. Not the, you, you don't see the word African. You don't see the word African American. Okay, 1769, keep it in mind. Now you also see pictures of American Indians that was placed on this advertisement. Look at the, uh, I, I, next time I'm gonna make sure that my mouse is displaying, but look at the pictures inside of this advertisement you see in American Indians. How do we know this? Now, if we go back to some historical artifacts that I'm getting ready to pull up here, uh, let's see. We got to go back to some historical artifacts depicting Aborigines of America. And give me a second here. I'm going to give you an example. Keep that in mind. Keep that picture in mind. You'll find that they were wearing the exact same things. Boom. Example A. Okay. Uh, the headdress. Okay. The attire at the bottom. Same thing. Right. Now, indigenous to America now, not anywhere else. And I mean the Americas, meaning North, Central, and South. Okay. Uh, another example. Okay. Same attire. I hope you guys can see this. I hope so. Actually, let me just quickly double check before I jump to the next one. Uh, let me make sure that you can see this. Okay, it's coming out clear. Good. All right, good. Okay. All right. Example C. These are historical artifacts now. This is this is not made up. This is I didn't draw this. None of that. Okay. This is this is the stuff that I'm telling you guys that you need to research about. When you travel around the world, you're going to notice historical artifacts that's going to show you depiction of depictions of what our people look like. Now, does this, like this picture alone right here, what does this picture look like? Uh, right now, everybody's talking about Drake and in blackface, right? Look at this picture. Look at it closely. Blackface, right? The red lipstick. But at, honestly, that's his lips, right? I'm going to keep going. There's another one. I would love to buy this. 
If anybody has this, contact me immediately. I want that one. And I know that was for sale. These are hard to come by now. Uh, a lot of people are picking those up quickly. Uh, but so I want to pull up another part. Let me make sure I got it. Yeah. Okay, so here's another thing. Let me, let me go to the source of where that came from, right? Or where that um, alleged advertisement came from. It came from a website called Skyway. Um, we're going to get into it now. Here's another thing. Who wrote this? Okay. I mean, no, 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 no. The real question should be who typed this. Uh, because what we do see, and I'm gonna make sure I got it here. What we do see are many different fonts and sizes being used in this alleged advertisement. All right. Now, then we see pictures placed on this advertisement as well. Let me make sure you got that on that. Okay, I can see it on that screen. Now, did Adobe Photoshop exist in 1769? I mean, look at the visual, the, the graphic around, like the surrounding the advertisement, guys. I hope you guys can see this clear. It looks like it, you guys can in my own mind. Look at that visual graphic now. Um, all around the sides, I wish my mouse was showing up and I see that it's not showing up, but it's on the corners. What technology do you know that they used to create this in 1769? I'll wait. Somebody lying. And it's definitely not my grandfather. Now, this came, like I said, it came from a website called Skyway. Let's, um, before I jump into who that is, let me, remember when I told you, I told everybody that the transatlantic slave trade, before it was called the transatlantic slave trade, it was called the Middle Passage. Now, directly on this website, and I'm going to pull up this quote, it states this. It states the Middle Passage. Notice that it said ships might load on anywhere from 200 to over 600 African slaves. Let me look at the screen, make sure you guys can see it. One second. Let me let it load up. Okay. It's popping up perfectly. Now, the quote that is very important that I highlighted here says, the crowding was so severe, the ventilation so bad, and the food so poor during the middle passage of between five weeks and three months that a loss of around 14 to 20 percent of their cargo was considered the normal price of doing business this slave trade is thought to have transported at least 10 million and perhaps as many as 20 million africans to the american shore what's the key word here Thought. This slave trade is thought to have transported at least. They weren't sure. That's a guess. It's thought to have transported. You don't know. Where's your source? If this slave trade is thought to have transported at least 10 million and perhaps like maybe as many as 20 million, where's your source? You got to look at the key words that they're using, guys. It is thought to have, perhaps. Come on. So anyway, this site, and I'm going to pull this up. One second. Here's the site, okay? The site is called Skyway, and this is a quote directly from their website. Uh, what is it? Skyway.com? S-C-I-W-A-Y dot com, right? About Skyway. See, in order to connect the dots, you literally have to trace them. You got to find out their sources, right? Now, they say, they pride off of this now. They say that they are the, quote, largest and the most comprehensive directory 
of South Carolina information on the internet. Now that's a bold statement. And then you turn around and don't show me an author of this information and you definitely don't cite any sources. You, you just tell me a great story, even read quotes, but you don't cite nothing and you don't tell me who wrote it. I, now, I hope I'm not yelling, guys. If I'm, Let me look at the chat real quick. Am I yelling? Tell me if I'm yelling, y'all. If I'm yelling, I'll calm down a little bit. Because, I see, I ain't going to be no hoes bars no more. This is part one, and I'm just getting started. Um, now, here's another thing that these self-proclaimed scholars. Now, I'm not talking about anybody individually. Okay? I don't want anybody to take anything the wrong way. Like, I'm trying to start some trouble. What I'm trying to do is get our people to understand that we have been lied to multiple times all the way around about this slave trade, about our history, so-called, okay? It's a reason behind that. And this is the reason why I'm going to continuously do exactly what I'm doing, exposing it, exposing it. And you can try to take these websites down. I got receipts. I don't care if you try to take these websites down. And I'm talking to the people that's probably watching, ain't saying nothing. Oh, he got it from, wait a minute, let's, no, 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 no. It's too late. It's too late. I'm going to get on another website that these self-proclaimed scholars love to use. Oh, everybody came from Africa. It was 12.5 million. Let me jump onto this website right here. So the Transatlantic Slave Trade Database Voyages. This is called the SlaveVoyages.org. Okay, and I hope, let me check real quick before we go any further that everybody can see this. Uh, okay, everybody can see that. I'm making sure that it's coming out correctly. Now, this is where they show you where these quote-unquote slaves, mind you, they're not telling you if they... Uh, uh, what their origin is, nothing. They just telling you slaves. Here go the numbers. Oh, they coming from Spain, Brazil, the Netherlands, the USA, France, and here's the disembark and embark where, where they were picked up and dropped off at. <laughs> keep in mind, I keep telling you there's a difference between truth and fact. A lot of those scholars, self-proclaimed scholars, would believe that this is a fact because somebody created a website now. Oh, and they threw some numbers out there. Where they get this information from? Number one, where they get it from? Okay, and how come they not breaking it down to you? Now, I mean, you can tell me the numbers all day long. How come we can't know if that's white or black people, so-called black people? I, so wait a minute, I, you, you could be telling me, and these are white slaves right now. You could be telling me slaves and they could be white slaves. Do you hear me? You, you're just telling me numbers in between a particular timeline of the 1500s all the way to what? 1875. But the U.S. Census started in the 1790s. But you got records of these numbers since the 1500s. Some are lying. Let me tell you how they lying. When you use this website and you click above and you go to... Uh, Wait a minute, let me go to the next one. You click about the project. Now, this is where you have to find out and, and do the research on where this information arised from. You can't take somebody's word for it and think that this is fair game. Oh, you know what? They telling the truth. Okay, well, I'm going to listen to that. Wait a minute, y'all. It's 12.5. You can't do that. You can't do that. You got to literally research this information to find out if it's truth or fact. Fact meaning it's based off of somebody else's opinion. You can't do it no other way than this. Now, you click on the, and I took screenshots because I know I got to figure out how you can see my mouse and I could be able to do like navigate the uh, website live. I, I, I'll figure that out because I'm using a totally different program to live stream from uh, uh, normal people. Usually people would just use the, uh, Google Hangouts. I, I, I'm not, I want to put stuff on screen along with me and Google Hangouts doesn't allow that. 
So I'll figure it out. And once I figure it out, then we'll probably like part two, I'll probably be navigating uh, on screen. But other than that, the screenshots are even better because there's particular points that I want to make here. You click on the about, uh, about the project. Once you click on the about project, you click on the uh, history of the project so you can know what's going on, where they get this stuff from, right? This is what they tell you on top of that. This is what they tell you. Now, before they tell you 1770 this and uh, 1500 that, they tell you right in the beginning where I highlight. Hold on one second. Let me make sure. Wait a minute. Okay, there you go. And I highlighted this. Uh-oh. I hope this come out on the screen clear. One second. I hope everybody can see this. Okay. There you go. Okay, it's coming out clear. Okay. All right, from the, I'm going to read this now. From the late, listen to this, y'all. From the late 1960s, Herbert Klein, and I'm going to go into Herbert Klein, probably in a documentary. I got to. You got to understand who that guy is. It's a reason why they're pinpointing these people out inside of this history of the project, and Herbert Klein was the first one mentioned for a very, very particular reason. I might even tap into it a little bit here. But I'm definitely going to have to come out with a documentary about this guy. Uh, Herbert Klein and other scholars began to collect, listen to this, archival data on slave trading voyages from unpublished sources and to code them into a machine-readable format. In 1970s, in the 1970s and 1980s, Scholars created a number of slave ship databases, several of which the current authors choose to recode from the primary sources rather than integrate the databases of those scholars into the present set. In other words, they say, you know what? Nah, uh -uh. We can make up our own. Let's 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 just do this the way we want to do it. Let's. Do, 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 and they put it into a system. Here it is. Now, here's the, here's the kicker. By the late 1980s, there were records of approximately 11,000 individual transatlantic voyages in 16 separate databases. Listen to this. Not all of which were transatlantic, nor, as it turned out, slave voyages. Boom. So what are they? Made up, created databases. You have no record of the transatlantic slave trade. They told you that. Not all of which were transatlantic, nor, as it turned out, slave voyages. So you created a story. Uh, Melville Herskovics created the Middle Passage. Then the rest of these Jews, the Jesuits, got together in the University of Chicago and created an idea that they learned from Frank Boaz, the professor at the University of Chicago, okay, in which Melville Herskovic started teaching all of our people, especially those that were in the Boule in the University of Northwestern, still in Chicago, the same out of Africa theory. Now debunk this. It's right here in front of you. I'm reading it right off of their site. Debunk it. I dare you. You can't. See, and I'm not even trying to belittle anybody with the information or their credibility. It's not about that. It's about logical thinking. This is what they took away from our people. They took away the logical thinking skills that we possessed naturally. When we were born with, they took it away from us. They said, nah, nigga, listen, we gonna tell you what you gonna, uh, uh, where you came from because we want this land for a particular reason for ourselves. No, you came from Africa. You came from Africa. If you came from Africa, that means what? That means you're not from here. That means you're an immigrant, foreigner. What is Trump doing to these immigrants right now? Quietly, he getting rid of them, right? Building up a border. Y'all better pay attention to what happened in the past in order to correct the present. 
so we can have a better future. They lying about the transatlantic slave trade. Period. Ain't no records. None. I checked Library of Congress. I checked, and I do a lot of traveling. I checked a lot of public libraries. Here. Yeah. The National Archives. See, the National Archives ain't got none of these records. Why not? Oh, but you but you're getting them from universities. Oh, and wait a minute. And speaking of universities, look at this. Herbert Klein. Let me hold on. Before I go any further, let me make sure it pop up on the uh let me make sure it pop up on the screen. One second. Okay, it ooh. All right, now this one, okay, this one is not going to look too good as far as this one. I'm Keep in mind, I'm going to do a documentary. I'm going to go into full detail uh, about him and a couple of other historians, anthropologists, okay? Well, we're going to go into it, but keep in mind, and my logo's in the way. Hold on, let me take my logo off real quick because I, I, want, I want you to see this part where it say, uh, wait a minute. Now, it says that, uh, okay, they're saying he from, uh, oh, wait, oh, 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 listen, listen. Was born in New York City the same year as my grandfather, 1936, right? New York, with the Bronx, went to Syracuse University from 1953 to 1955. And then they said, and then he transferred to the University of Chicago. Okay, I keep telling y'all about that university here. And where he obtained his B.A. in history in 1957, got his master's in 59 and his Ph.D. in 63 with a major in history and minor in anthropology. You got to know who your enemies are now. Foreigners. And I bet with that last name like that, they ain't from here. He was probably born here. Where his parents from? But you got all these foreigners telling you your history. See, make oh you you came from Africa. They created this. Listen to this. Uh, scroll down. He has been a Woodrow Wilson fellow. Remember when I told you that your history was created in the, the late 1800s, top 1900s. Woodrow Wilson, the pre as president, implemented the industrialized system of compulsory education. Period. Single-handedly, along with J.P. Morgan, John D. Rockefeller, Henry Ford. I don't care if YouTube cut this off. I'm going to tell you. Henry Ford, uh, the University of Chicago, the National Associate, uh, Education Association, uh, and a lot of these other foundations that I'm about to read off right now that this guy was funded by. He got grants from Woodrow Wilson Fellowship, Oh, right here it says he received grants from the Ford Foundation. Listen to this. The Social Science Research Council. That's another one. I exposed them in one of my documentaries, maybe two. The National Science Foundation. The National Endowment for Humanities. I got to go into that. Not right now. And another one. Because that's, ooh, that's deep. You got to know who these people are that created your history, guys. Same people, foreigners, World War I, top bottom, created our history. Stop letting them lie to you saying that you came from Africa when you can go back and literally check the wreck. Forget a book. Forget some book from some fake scholar that got some doctrine degree at this university or oh, what are your credentials? Who cares? You're lying. You're being taught by the same people that was taught by them Jews that created African-American studies. Let me stop yelling. This is pissing me off, okay? And I'm not trying to get too upset. So I'm gonna calm down. I don't, I don't want y'all to think that I'm a, I'm a, I just get real passionate when I talk about this because it pisses me off because our people need to know this. We have been lied to. And guess what? It's not just us, people of color. Those non-elite white folks got taught the same thing. Same thing. That's why I said I'm not with nobody, no organizations, no groups. I don't care. I'm a positive human being. I want to keep positivity around my realm. Okay? I don't care what skin complexion you are. If you about truth, I'm for you, brother, sister. 
And I hope you for me too, brother, sister. We got a lot of work to do. They, they lied. They threatened our grandparents and said, nigga, I dare you to say that you an Indian. I'm going to hang you. I'm a, I ain't going to go too far. Okay. But this is, this is documented. I ain't got no reason to lie. All right. But somebody else did. Somebody got a reason. What's their reason? And if we could trickle all this anthropology all the way down to eugenics, which was created and cultivated by Charles Darwin. Okay. Eugenics was created by Francis Galton. Look at those anthropologists of the 19th century. Those are the enemies who was funding them. The Jews, the Jesuits, you talking about some enemies now. And, and he, you know, and I'm not trying to start no race war, nothing, none of that. I'm just about truth. I want to put this out. You've been lied to here. Here you go. Now take off with this research you're doing on your own. I can't do everything for you. You got to put in the footwork just as well as I am. I'm going to continue to travel. I'm going to continue to document this information. Ain't nobody stopping me. No weapon formed against me will ever prosper. Will ever prosper. I don't care who you think you are. I'm putting this out. So let me calm down. That's it. Uh, Cause see, that's this is this is why I don't go live. This is why I don't go live. Um, I'm still gonna put out doc. Y'all already know. I'm not gonna stop. I can't. I can't. Who else is gonna say this? Who else? Who else got our back? We waiting for somebody who? Who? Who gonna pop up and help us but us? Let me pull this over. One second. I'm gonna calm down. We've been lied to for too long. Too long. Dang, you too emotional. Yeah, I get emotional. I'm a passionate person. I love my people that much. I put my life on the line. Malcolm X did the same. We owe them. We owe our ancestors. Martin Luther King. Y'all could call them coward. They look at look at all the names they call on all these people that sacrificed their life for us. Sacrifice their life. See, and they didn't have the resources then, so I can't knock none of them brothers or sisters that had absolutely no idea that they were being indoctrinated. They ain't had no idea. They ain't know. They didn't. Some of them did. And they wore blue. And they got paid. Coming out them universities. I'm not saying all of y'all. I know I got a lot of people in universities. I'm not knocking y'all. I'm not knocking you. It's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish it off. Do, live your life. Just know that it's more to the story than just that. Just know it. The revolution ain't going to be televised. When is it going to be? The change is now, y'all. And it has to start right here. Then right here, from within. But it got to start here first. Because this is what they attacked first. This is what they attacked. 
That's why they are still in control. That's why. Okay. All right, let me look at the chat. Almost 2,000 people watching. I appreciate that, y'all. I appreciate that. I thank each and every one of you for clicking like, share, commenting, donating, telling your mothers, your brothers, your sisters, your aunts, nieces, your best friends, your co-workers, your celebrity friends. I thank each and every one of y'all. 